Hello, welcome back to Quilting Color. For day 27 of the 15 minutes to quilt challenge, I'm going to be working on the unconventional and unexpected quilt, which is the name of the book that the quilt came from. It's a fun improv quilt. I wasn't very creative when it came to naming the quilt, but that name backfired on me after I made this quilt top doesn't look as unconventional and unexpected as I would like. So today we're going to see what we can do to fix that. I hope you get a chance to sew with me. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's just examine the quilt and find out what the problem with the quilt is and to come up with a game plan for how to fix it. Let's just talk about the block itself first. The block has a center square. It has the four hourglass units and it has the improv pieced sashing. All of this actually, all of these sections are improv piece and then they're regularly pieced together as a whole. And when I was putting these little blocks together, the one thing that I had a hard time with is putting, is balancing out the colors and the fabrics on these squares. And so I wound up making them into rows. I know it's kind of hard to see in this, but you can see there's one. And then here there's two two stars and then there's three dots here and you won't be able to see the long rows but there's blue it just goes down in a row and then the red stars go here and then this red red is in the bottom and I think that to me that is part of what's making this quilt not so unconventional and unexpected I wanted it to look a little bit more unique I think this causes the problem but before I start ripping things out and rearranging the blocks I know that I already had problems with the arrangement so what I'm going to do is to make some more blocks and I'll see if I can just add I can just make a bigger quilt and see if that fixes the problem um, I'll just lay it out to see if that fixes the fixes the problem and if it doesn't then I can start uh, ripping out some of these seams and rearranging them to make it more um, more of an unconventional look. So one way to so one way I'm going to fix this problem is by just adding more blocks in, and put them in in a way that interrupts this um, layout. So if I put say a blue a uh, red for example here and maybe a different blue here, it'll just throw off the setting and maybe it'll make it fix itself depending on how many extra blocks that I add. But if it doesn't, I can always rip out some seams and rearrange these blocks. The other thing that I think, the other mistake I made is that I didn't use these fabrics in the sashing strips. The book itself, when you look at the quilt, you, it's hard to see the squares. And I think the reason it's this quilt is easier to see the squares is because they have unique fabrics. So if I put, for example, so for example, if I put other stars in the sashing, then the squares would be more hidden into the quilt. So let's go through the box and see what extra fabric we have in there. is one thing that I always do is I make sure that I keep the extra scrap fabric in the box until the quilt is completely finished because you never know when you might need it. Um, I know that I was running low on some of the fabrics and so I did add a couple extras and there's always more that you can add as uh, we can always just add more as we go along. So let's just see what Little pieces we have. We have an hourglass unit here. We have another hourglass unit here. There's some fabric for the squares, but maybe as we talked about before, we could use these for sashing and that'll make it a little bit blendy. It'll help blend things more. had more units that I could use. Here's another unit, hourglass unit. There's something, I'm not sure what that's about. There's just some extra fabric. 
Okay, I don't see a lot of pre-sewn things. Maybe these are squares that are the right size. Okay. I don't think I want to use that one. That's just extra. I'm not sure how many extra blocks that I want to make, but I know that I want to make at least four so I can put it on this side of the quilt. But eventually, I feel like I'm going to go all the way around and make a whole bunch more. So I'm not worried about having making too many blocks for this quilt. So it looks like we have fabric for two extra blocks for the square. So I could add some more of this. Um, so I, could, I, ne I need to cut some more squares for this quilt. And to make it uncommon, I want to choose other fabrics that are not these. So this one... Yep, this one looks like it's long, it's big enough to be able to use. And maybe we can use some of this. This one is in the sashing block, so it'll be nice to add that. And maybe some of this, just to add some variety. And this has already been used, and these have already been used. Okay, so I'm going to cut a couple more, some more of these for now. I'm just going to follow this fold line since it's already here. Gonna try to fix the grain, even though for this quilt the grain line is not that important. And also for this quilt, the sashing strips are not going to be cut with the ruler, but I am going to cut the squares with the ruler. the wrong size. I can use this for the sashing strip, no problem. I need to take the seam allowance into consideration. Okay. Um, do I want to go ahead and cut the rest? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to cut this one also. And these will work well for the sashing. Okay, so I have four of those. I'm gonna 
or a red one, and a blue one. Six. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this. I think it'll add a lot of energy to the quilt. I think I want more than four. I think that'll be too much. And because this is an improv quilt, I'm not really that worried about perfect cutting. Because the uh, Fixing the problem is actually part of the charm of the improv quilt, is to make mistakes and then fix, figure out unique and creative ways to fix them. You notice I'm using a different ruler now. <coughs> this one has the numbers labeled both directions, so it makes it a lot easier to know what you're cutting. And also because this is an improv quote, I'm not worried about um, making sure that the squares, that the grain is proper. So it's fine with me if these um, lines don't line up exactly right on the quilt. In fact, I think it's better when it doesn't. So now we have the center squares done, and we have just a few, only two triangle pieces. So maybe we need to figure out, plan some more of the hourglass units. And so for the hourglass units, I just cut big squares, make them into half square triangles, and then I turn them and then turn the half square triangles into quarter square triangles to make an hourglass unit like this. So the trick to this, especially when you're working with improv, is to make sure that you have big enough squares so that when you trim them down, they will fit into your quilt. Like this. So these are going to be cut very much smaller to make them fit. Okay, so now we're going to make... These to me are not big enough, so these will be good for the sashing.
and to make the fabric for the sashing I went either direction so sometimes I went this direction and sometimes I went this direction let me find the quilt here and I'll show you all right so I'm just going to cut some strips here to make them work for the sashing and we just need them to be this long which is perfect for this So I'm just going to cut these into strips and I'm not going to use a ruler. Okay, so we just had time to make a plan today and we had time to cut some squares. But I think I'm well on my way to making this quilt better and I'll just continue on with the sashing and the hourglass units to make this quilt. This quilt. This quilt is from the book Unconventional and Unexpected by Roderick Kierkoff. I made this quilt as a sew along with uh, Sujata Shah. She had a sew along on her blog. This video is part of a series where I make each of the quilts that I have in process to see how much work I can get done in 15 minutes. I hope that you did get a chance to sew along with me and if you did please leave a note in the comments to let me know what you worked on and how much you got done in your 15 minutes to quilt and I'll give you an entry in the drawing. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your support and we'll see you again tomorrow.